December 7th happened, it struck me that this, this was the country from which my parents had come, and they had attacked my country. I, mean, I felt that way about it, that the United States was my country, and my parents' country had attacked my country, and I took it very, very personally. The results were, of course, that um, we were evacuated from the West Coast. Um, so, of course, we lived on Bashan Island, and the first place we were taken was Pinedale, right there. So we had to, to um, be taken by soldiers in covered army trucks. You've seen those are covered army trucks. And they came on to where we lived. We lived on an island in Puget Sound. And they took us to uh, across the ferry and on the Seattle. And then they took us down to right there, Pinedale Assembly Center near Fresno, California. This is hot and dry, completely different from anything that I had ever experienced. Never been to California before, certainly not a place where it was dry, and clearly not a place where there were army barracks everywhere, and the people looked just like me. Black hair, slant eyes, olive skin. We were all Japanese. And I felt strange because I grew up uh, on Vashon Island, which is you know, mostly white. It was an island in the Puget Sound. And we were taken by train to there the Pinedale Assembly Center, and there were all these barracks. You've seen pictures of army barracks, haven't you? Barracks where the soldiers lived. Well, we had to live in those kinds of conditions too. And then it was decided that we needed to go to a more permanent camp. So we went from Pinedale to Tootie Lake. Tootie Lake was a huge camp, about 18,000 people. And it was a mixture of people from Southern California, down here, and those of us from Seattle and Tacoma and Kent and other places in Washington. So it was a combination of the North and the South, and we had our conflicts. So, they made us sign a 28-question questionnaire to determine our loyalty. I don't know how they could determine if we were loyal or not based on questions that we were forced to sign. But, but they did that. The four of us in our family, my mother, my dad, my older brother, and I, we all said we were loyal. And because of that, while we were at Tule Lake, we were then sent to Heart Mountain. This was just another uh, camp, but it was in Wyoming. It was dry and dusty and a mixture of people from the north, like Washington, Oregon, and people from the south. Amazingly, our cultures were very different and we had clashes for a future that you didn't know how long you were gonna be gone. What would you pack? I mean, think about that for yourself. And that would be an interesting exercise for you to, to do. Because when you do that, you define what's important. The first thing that went into my suitcase was my Bible and then clothes and shoes.
What did your family do with their house and their belongings and the car and such? We had a hired hand, a Filipino by the name of Mac Garcia. He had worked for our family about six years before this period. So we asked him to move into our home so that it wouldn't be um, burglarized or burned. And those things happened to people when they were not occupied. So Mac moved into our home. And uh, when my folks came back after the war and after the evacuation, you know, the house was still there. Other people were not so lucky. Their homes were burned or bombed or ransacked or whatever. But we were very lucky, and so our house is still there on Vashon Island. So what that to told me is, you know, it doesn't matter who, who you're working with. You need to show respect and fairness, and that paid off. How did your neighbors react? to this? Did you have any ill will or animosity? We had good relationships with all of our neighbors before um, the evacuation. It was hard for my mom and dad and me to accompany my brother to the bus that was taking these young men away and taking them into the army to fight for the United States Army that was keeping the rest of the family as prisoners, enemies of the country. But that's just the way it was. And so, you know, there are times when we accept what we don't like because that's just the way it is. So my brother left us and he fought in Italy and he survived uh, just a leap forward. He did survive and he came back and we were united again as a family. With holes and you sat over the holes and you did your business. And there was nothing to separate you from your neighbor, nor door in front, I mean, hmm. gross. How about showers? <laughs> showers were spigots that hung from the ceiling and you turn the water on in a room with other women. I mean, the part that was hard was that the, <laughs> the walls had knot holes and people had knocked the knot out and they were peeking at us. <laughs> and so we would stand in front of the <clears throat> knot hole and we would protect each other while <laughs> others were taking a shower. <laughs> Oh. I mean, it was Boys. gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only word I could use. It was gross. How was the food? <clears throat> we had mess halls in every block. There was a mess hall. And people who had skills in baking or cooking or had restaurant experience in the back would sign up for chef or uh, cook or then there were those of us who didn't have any experience in restaurant work and we would be like dishwashers or waiters. I remember being a waiter and they had these great big pitchers of tea. Here, here we are, you know, trying to serve teacups. Mm. I appreciate waitresses and waiters now because I've had that experience of carrying these huge pitchers mm -hmm. and trying to serve people, you know. Was the food pretty good though? It depended on who the chef was. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it always depends, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah. Had your parents already passed away? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your brother as well? So I'm the sole survivor, and therefore the, I wrote a book about this period of time as sort of a memento to my parents and to all people who, in spite of, of craziness on a national level, that they, on a personal level, can remain true to who they are. So. 
And you don't seem angry. I'm not. I don't see any justification for anger. You know, things happen. Things happen, and they'll happen to you. And on how do you face it? How will you face whatever is going on in your life? And when you're my age and you're looking back on your life, can you say, I did the best I could given the circumstances that was uppermost in my life? Maybe that's the thing that I want to share with you is that we can't always predict what's going to happen to us. But we sure can decide how we're going to act in any situation and make it true to who you really are and who you think you want to become.